Hey everyone, Venomous Stare here bringing you a Protoss vs. Protoss on King Sejong Station. Between two North American players. You have good payout if I win, says Puck. This is the guy in the bottom right, Red, the root player, Puck. Known for his macro play and exceptional control of high-tech unit compositions. And in the top left, we have King Tesla playing for the TA Pro team. This is a guy who used to be called Rob, and used to do lots of proxy 2 gates versus high level Zerg streamers. You probably know him from a few of those old streams. If you used to watch Idra or Destiny, you like to do some proxy 2 gate. He'll take a gas here though, so no proxy 2 gate. Some banter going on as players are doing mirroring builds pretty much. As it is so early on in the game, this is very standard, so you almost always see this. I like to see it when players chatter in the early game. It makes it interesting. It shows that they know each other. I don't think there's anything more boring than a barcode versus barcode. It's like, well, okay, but what's the storyline? Do these players dislike each other? I mean, sure, the play can be there, but really, that's pretty much it. So I, I like to see players play under the real IDs, and I like to see them talk to each other in the early game, whether they like each other or not, you know? Like, I always, I think honestly Smack Talk is good for StarCraft 2 and good for any competitive game or scene. As long as it doesn't get overboard, but a little bit of shit talk, especially on ladder, I mean, really is fine. But if you're gonna talk shit, don't hide behind a barcode when you do it, because there's really no point in doing that. Puck has two gateways, so does King Tesla. I would venture to guess they're both going to do a double adept opener because that's what this build looks like to me. And so it is double adepts. King Tesla immediately starting his mothership core, Puck right behind him. Puck chronoing warp gate, King Tesla chronoing one of his adepts. A mirror matchup in every sense of the word. King Tesla has a probe here. I would say that he's definitely the more cheesy of the two players. He's an aggressive guy, kind of a trickster, evil Protoss, some would say. And Puck doesn't, oh he does, he sees it. And he's probably going to kill this. So, as you know, Adepts, once you have two of them, they one bang workers. Little, little tag team. That's a big reason why this double Adept opener is popular, but they're going to kind of see each other in this awkward little impasse. Puck Toss has a mothership core. He's confident that he will defend. Another gateway coming for Puck as well as a Robo. Whereas old Roberto, excuse me, King Tesla, I don't know why I said that, has elected to expand. Oh, because he used to be called Rob. Okay. Puck might get trapped. He does. Nice micro from Tesla. He surrounds him. Meanwhile, Puck, who has four gateways into Robo and is still chronoing Warp Gate, is going to easily defend. Look at the Sim City. Notice how Tesla tried to dart in. He didn't really, I think, notice that this was walled in. But Puck brilliantly placed another gateway here, rendering the attempted harass of the Adepts useless. It's very hard to harass workers going in and out of gas whenever your opponent has defensive capabilities. Puck is going to run into the main with the depth, see what he can find. He clicks on this robo and sees it. He likes to shade in, which I honestly thought he would cancel. Gateway, proxy pylon. This is the legacy of the void proxy pylon, as I like to call it. Because in HOTS and Weg uh, Wings of Liberty, the units warped in at maximum speed without this gate. Puck is oddly enough going to lead Tesla to his proxy pylon. Really not sure about that decision. But perhaps he was just trying to save his unit, which he did. But Tesla, I think, really knows that Puck is being aggressive. Puck is making an observer, as he's known to do. Good macro players make early observers, and Puck has shown his tendency to do that. He's elected to go with the Warp Prism, which is a huge weapon for him specifically as a player. His micro is very crisp. Here we go, Puck versus Tesla, micro battle. Some nice force fields from Tesla, but Puck is just going to pick back up and retrieve his units. Tesla's warping in some more. He only has this one pylon, and he's out of photon overcharge energy. 
Puck intelligently baited out force fields, and if we go to units, Tesla could be in some trouble here. He's at a stalker disadvantage. Another force field comes down, still without Mothership Core injury. Units being lost here for Tesla rapidly. Lots of hot pickups from Puck. He's really putting on a clinic here. Wow! Losing almost no units. Lots of weak ones. He might want to run back and recharge here. Ooh, Tesla trying to focus fire. Ooh! Puck loses the warp prism narrowly. So Tesla made a make or break play there. Focus firing the warp prism and it succeeded. So nice play from Tesla there to stop the bleeding. And now Puck. He has this observer which is quintessential whenever pressuring your opponent. He's remaking his warp prism. He's making three sentries of his own. This is valuable because he's taking advantage of Tesla's lack of warp, warp prism. Oftentimes, uh, players who are defending will just make immortals, try to make immortals. And I think that Puck is really, really suspecting here that Tesla's not the kind of guy who's going to make a warp prism and do a bunch of crazy drop pickup micro against him and out micro him. And once again, this warp prism for Puck is a huge weapon, so he would probably remake it against almost anyone. King Tesla does have his expansion, though, aka Rob. He's scouting out with his observer. This is very useful, this scouting information. He sees, oh, uh, okay, he does see this warp prism. He caught a, gl he caught a glimpse of it. Yep, definitely, 100% sees the warp prism. He might be thinking Puck has Blink or he's going to Elevator. Ooh, Puck trying to do some potential force field on the ramp, but King Tesla snuffed that one out with his Observer. One thing that you have to note about Puck is his Micro, even when he's retreating. Players oftentimes will have their Micro suffer whenever they're retreating, but here we go, King Tesla's trying to engage. Ooh, hot pickup on the sentries. Ooh, he even picks up the fourth one. Puck really doing a good job here preserving every single unit that he has. And if we look up at the units tab, even though King Tesla has this expansion, Puck is still keeping up in supply. Puck's not, expansion's not even done, and King Tesla has a worker lead. Puck has been diligently producing workers, so he has some to transfer, and he does. Even when you're one base all inning, it's better to over make workers than it is to float money. And that's what Puck showed here, even though he was doing a one base build, a one base pressure, and his natural was delayed. He still made workers, so he's not really as behind as you might think. His excellent micro also forced King Tesla to focus on units and less on macro. If King Tesla was left to his own devices, Puck would not be as far ahead. Puck's going to scout in here with two adepts, very likely will cancel these shades. No, he elects to shoot them forward. He gets two probes, opting for a third. There's the third. He might even get more. And suddenly, Puck has a worker advantage. Nice play from Puck. He's killed nine of King Tesla's workers now. King Tesla has a warp prism of his own here. I love it when in in mirror matchups, players play similar styles. As if you note the production tab, they're both going disruptor. Warp prisms, bizarro clashing paths there. Puck obviously walked very far forward there to try to snipe the warp prism, but the positioning of those units prevented him from doing so. Puck is going to run over with the disruptor. This could get filthy. Notice that King Tesla is getting the very good warp prism speed upgrade, which almost no one gets, especially versus Zerg. It's a great upgrade. Here comes the disruptor. Oh, big disruptor. Wow. Filthy shot. Kills three stalkers and a probe. If we go to units lost, King Tesla, after that money shot, he's not really in a good way. He's turning to reestablish defenses, clear out the proxies. He's also going to fly in and see what he can do. The exact same move Puck did. Let's see what happens. He kills a few probes. See, Puck didn't have stalkers waiting there, so it wasn't as much of a blow for Puck as it was for Tesla. Tesla here is having to build cannons. One thing to note is, if you looked in the production tab, if you're a, del if you're a diligent viewer, you notice that he wasn't making workers, so these cannons actually delayed Tesla's workers, and he is behind in workers, so... Here comes another disruptor for Puck. Ooh, it gets another good shot but he does lose it afterwards because of what was going on in this base. 
and it looks as though just a few workers died. I will check the kill count here on this, the disruptor. If workers just died, it will have about six kills, because three and three. We're about to find out. Puck also getting warp prism speed. Six kills, okay, so it did just kill workers. Failed attempt there. Tesla falling victim to Puck's Sim City once again. Sim City, by the way, in StarCraft 2 is the way that you build your buildings, specifically the position you put them in, usually to combat harass or to combat Zerg and run buys. Basically defensively, as you see a warp prism die there. Puck's warp prism might die too, and it does, even though he tried to fly back. Nice force fields! King Tesla puts a couple disruptors forwards, only gets the immortal. He's going to run forward with another disruptor, but these wonderful force fields from Puck. Oh, two more beautiful ones. And Puck at this point has really put on a micro clinic. He's also ahead in macro. King Tesla does not have a third. Really, the one advantage he has is his double robo. And he, oh, gets a huge money shot there. And a nice little clip on the immortal there for Puck. But King Tesla potentially working his way back into that game, game with the money shot. That was pretty much the best that he could have hoped for. If we go to units, King Tesla has the stalker lead. But they are even in disruptors. Puck has a few probes oddly positioned. Both players shooting disruptors forward and then cowering back. King Tesla losing a couple stalkers there. Puck definitely getting the better of these micro exchanges. Loses a couple more there does Tesla. This is somewhat frustrating in PvP. These disruptor versus disruptor battles can really get turned into who wants to play more defensive. Similar to how ZVZ was in 2012 when both players would rush to Infester and the player who defended was usually at the advantage. Speaking of defense, Puck's going to have to pull a good one off and he kills a couple stalkers and runs King Tesla off because at this point, you know, two stalkers, two stalkers, that might not seem like a lot, but in a mirror matchup it really is because Puck is trading two for zero, two for zero, and if you look at stalkers, now all of a sudden Puck has a significant lead the income disadvantage for King Tesla has really caught up to him. And King Tesla snipes the disruptor right at the choice moment there, saving lots of his units. Tries some hot pickup micro, but it just doesn't work out. He does get some uh, some adepts in the main, kills about five workers there. They're almost even in workers killed. King Tesla GG's. No third there for King Tesla, really important to note. And despite the fact that King Tesla went too robo, I would say that Puck controlled his disruptors better, and that was instrumental in him winning the game. If you enjoyed that, subscribe for more, both to Puck and myself.